We ask, O oh Lord, that you strengthen our leaders, enlarge their scope, broaden their vision, remove every limitation around them in the name of Jesus. Grant them a higher level of faith. A kind of faith that will be infectious upon every one of us to make us to follow them yet the more. In the mighty name of Jesus. We receive grace for them. Each time they speak, each time they stand before us. None of them will speak of their wisdom. None of them will speak out of their capacity. But you will hijack their tongue to do the impossible in our generation. And we shall be direct beneficiaries. The glory will be yours. The blessings will be hers. Tonight, O oh Lord, I yield my tongue unto you. Do what you alone can do. Bless everyone here tonight. For those who are out there who couldn't come for one reason or the other, and for as many as have joined us online also, touch them irreversibly. Glorify your name in this meeting. We appreciate you. In Jesus' name, we are prayed. Praise the Lord. I want to thank the leadership of the Glory Men's team for counting me worthy to stand here. We have hundreds of people that are much better to do this. So our leader, it's an honor. Thank you, sir. And to the ESCO too, and to our GN leaders. I passed through the track before. 2000 or 2001. It's not an easy road to, to fly. Let's appreciate the Lord on behalf of our leaders. <laughs> Praise the Lord. And again, we need to also appreciate the Lord for the support that they have constantly given to each human team each time we came around here to do things like this. Of course, this was not the same way we left this place where we came about three, or three years or so ago. You can see so many changes. This place was imprinted. The ceilings were in this neat. The entire fence had been done. And I went around and could see barbed wires on our fences. I appreciate the Lord. And I was just saying, Lord, Lord bless me. To be able to, you can write a single check and it will write your entire bill of this place construction. For those that are giving 100 million, that's not the only thing they had. They are much more. Many times the, the, the money is laid in sacks. At times it gets rotting away. But when God blesses you, I'm sure you'll be a blessing unto others. Praise the Lord. We want to thank God for it after he has helped us. But the plane we are gliding on now, the level at which we are moving now, it's going to be a little different. Our brother spoke intensively from the scriptures. And I appreciate the Lord in the life of Brother F. Ziba. Of course, I've known him for a long time. Many of those things he rolled out are nuggets. But let's begin from this point. First Samuel. Sorry, I'm not. I may still go by what we have there. We have slice loaded. But as many as are led by the Spirit. They are the sons of God. First Samuel chapter 1. First Samuel chapter 1. For time, let's go straight to verse 11. Let's be very, very serious at this point in time. Let nobody doze around you. God forbid that anybody will doze around you. So you are your brother's keeper. First Samuel chapter 1, verse 11. Let's read together. Are we there? First Samuel chapter 1, verse 11. 1, 2, let's go. Then she made a vow and said, O Lord of hosts, if you will indeed look on the affliction of your maid servant and remember Adeba you are Jumo, and not forget Adeba you are Jumo, but we give Adeba you are Jumo his desire. As it comes to glory men's retreat today, I will bless you, but it reads, I will give him to the Lord 
all the days of his life and no result shall come upon his head. That's a vow. We pause for a few seconds. Shut your eyes. Do business with God at this point in time. Have concrete goal upon which you are coming to this retreat now and saying, Lord, this is what I have come for. Do you know I have my own goal? As I was driving into this place, a few things flashed into my mind. Brethren, let there be something concrete. Write down, write down, write down. One day you just pick my Bible, you see, when I have such unction, I write down. I'm never, I'm never shy to do that. You can see around my Bible, in my Bible, at the back, everywhere. As he tells me, I write it down. As he speaks to me, I write it down. As I receive it, I write it down. And brethren, even while it appeared extremely impossible, when I got, get to that realm and I write down, hardly had there been a time that those things didn't fulfill. And that is why when things are extremely pretty tight and difficult, extremely difficult, that's when I blossom. Why don't you also have something concrete? I'm never afraid of scarcity. They that know their God, they work strong and do exploits. My life is a demonstration of the efficacy in that scripture. Or all alone in Nani. The word of God is, is like fire. It's potent. More potent than acids. He releases it and it is done. 1993. I was almost going to go blind. Of course, I couldn't thread the needles on the operating table. I started from the perspective of operating room nursing and management. Getting theaters ready. And assisting surgeons at direct performance of surgeries. And I was also having some teaching roles anyway. I did that for about 17, 18 years before I crossed to the academic world. But it became difficult. I wouldn't want anyone to assist me with my surgery or to take over my case. Even if it is neurosurgery, eight, eight hours, I'll be on my feet. But it became difficult. So, <laughs> the matron had to advise me. I need to go to the staff clinic. Getting to the staff clinic... Of course, they wrote out a couple of uh, instruments to conduct a few tests. And the consultant eventually came to review what the registrars have done. And said, boy, this eye is almost going. And you may not see. And the rate at which the angle of vision, the view of vision was depreciating was so bad. How do I get blind so early? Of course, the equipment and steps by which they would need to remedy it. UCH didn't have at that point in time. I was referred to one private clinic in town. I won't mention where. And when the consultant came in the evening of that day and reviewed the report I gave, without the report, of course, I can remember what my values were. And I shared it with him. He said, it's only God that can bring this eye back. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. But that was a time in the days of Baba Obed. We just started worshipping in Bethel land. And we had this first crusade. On an evening like this, it was Bishop Francis Waluke that ministered that evening. And of course, I cannot forget one scripture. That's, I'm talking about the efficacy in the word of God. Don't just come here and loaf. God forbid Catch your own and run with it and there will be a miracle. The man said very many things but there was one scripture he said that set me a wire. Romans chapter 3 verse 4. Romans chapter 3 verse 4. While he mentioned Romans chapter 3 verse 4 and it reads let God be true. Let every man a liar. Ah. Hardly, scarcely will I read because the high wasn't really good. But that word just rang in my ears. I held on to it. Let God be true. 
let every man be a liar. That means let the consultant of thermologist be a liar. Let the one I was referring to in time be a liar. But let the word of God that says, I know the thoughts that I think towards you, let it be true. Long story. I didn't need to go through the registrars the third day. I went on my own straight to the consultant's office. I can see. Praise the Lord. Of course, they will bring out the Snellings chart, ABC or those stuff they will write and read from six meters. And I read as if brand new eyes were given to me. Praise the Lord. Of course, I can begin to tell you very many other things, very many other circumstances. So when you come to a place like this, look at your life. In what area do you have a lack or a deficiency? That's why this meeting is arranged. Can you get That's all I've come to say. That's why this meeting is arranged. And that's why I said, pause, write down. I didn't also have a child so easily some other days will tell that story when he says it there is surgery in that word that he releases to perform whether the acrorhinosis tostomy exenteration exeneration or whatever and it will be done without a simple high lead forceps Without any ophthalmic microscope, he goes into trabecular meshwork and he will correct whatever disorders are there and their proper drainage. Appreciate the Lord. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Well, I've been called to speak on family health, but I'm saying in case you have a need, me, I have a need. And I told you while I was driving it, God flashed into my mind and I have written down. So as the meeting proceeds also, Focus. Tell your neighbor, focus. Focus. Let there be no distraction. So we have seen how these, of course, you know, you remember the story of the birth of Samuel. That's the story. That's, that simple interaction brought Samuel. Now talking about productivity. And thank God for our Oga Hoju. Who told us, who gave us the background of the couple's meeting, anchored by our leaders, and the need to build on that and to fuse everything into productivity. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. Those who achieve early, they don't have to ex. Those who use 2022 cars, they, have two, they don't have two hearts. But you are the son of the living God. While COVID was really, really bad. That's the time we employed close to, of course, very many. One or two here may have knowledge of what I'm talking about. At least, he has stories about uh, one part of that issue. I mean, while it became so difficult, so even when there is scarcity, that's the time you will flourish. So, as you may be on strike, but they that know their God shall work strong and do exploits but you cannot fly with one wing let's go to the book of Genesis so that we can quickly bring our spouses along into this meeting in the realm of the spirit as we proceed Genesis chapter 2 we will look at some specific verses here we may not be able to take everything. Let's look at verse 15 for time. Then the Lord, I'm reading Genesis chapter 2, verse 15. You, of course, understand the background of the story. That was already rendered earlier now. 
Then the Lord God took the man and put him in the garden of Eden to do what? Tend and keep it. That's why the Lord has made you a man. If not, you will have been the mummy. When we are talking about tendering, it means to carefully nurse or nurture a young plant, maybe a seedling, to growth, to fruition, and of course, to begin to multiply. That's the sense of productivity. That's what God has called us to do. But you see, because of time, I'm just trying to jump. Let's go to verse 20. Verse 20. The Bible says, And so Adam gave names to all cattle, da 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 da. But for Adam, there was not found helper comparable to him. There is a purpose for which God created man. But for that vision to become a reality, there's the need for an helper. But an helper that is comparable. And that's why God had to perform the first Torakotomi here. It's not written in the Bible as Torakotomi. But when you put a man to sleep, using triad of anesthesia that means muscle relaxation loss of consciousness and analgesia that's what I mean by the triad it's until then you can enter into the chest praise the lord and in the chest is like a junction of very many sensitive organs the vessels there may appear friable little but they are extremely risky if you are dissecting and you make the mistake of creating a nick, when I, I mean a nick is not a total cut, but the continuous pulse, where pulse is wave of elongation and relaxation felt in an elastic lateral wall due to the left ventricle pumping 80 to 100 mils of blood into an already filled aorta. Oh, I'm not in class. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Praise, <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> <laughs> so for as long as the heart keeps pumping the elasticity components of the middle wall of the artery is put to task so if there is anything that creates a need there can be an exsanguination do you know what an exsanguination means we'll empty the blood right on you before you start to think of statistic clamps or whatever clamps to hold the bleeding vessel so God did it, but it was successful. 21. So how did he do it? Of course, he did anesthesia. How did I know that? And the Lord caused a deep sleep. So a deep sleep is not just topical spray. It's total deadening. On Adam. And he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh in his place. Then the reward the Lord God are taken from the man. Of course, you know the remaining part of the story. But let's go to verse 24. I hope everybody is attentive. Therefore, you, me, I shall leave my parents and be joined to who? This one that is meant for me because it was taken from the most dangerous, the most risky part of my being. So, if you want to grow or achieve, and you get to see your wife, Omashio, you get nowhere. And she didn't read, she didn't go to school. That is the portion that is best suited for your situation. She's dark, she's short. That's what God really saw that is perfect for bringing the productivity that He talked about. So don't begin to look for what is not lost. Did anybody get that one? Yoruba will say, Emma, one, two, son, okay. Because if you are looking for what is not lost, you will see a million others that may be a caricature, a look-alike, but will never be help meet. But the temptation will continue. And I can't begin to ask you how many of you have been tempted in your years of marriage. Scarcely would there be any soul here that have not been tempted, has not been tempted in one way or the other. 
But the ability to remember this scripture to know that only one soul under the sun is the one that is perfect for my situation. That solves that redeem in my heart at any time. Praise the Lord. So you can see, and be joined to his wife, and they shall become one flesh. Union. Baba Obed said, addition. And when Baba Obed was explaining addition, he was using a figurative expression of, look at this wood now. You can see that it's not a perfect, you know, length that was gotten to get this done. But it had to be welded using so much thermal heat, thermal energy, to get those two lengths together to fuse into one. So if you want to break this now, ah, it's already adhered. It's either you want to destroy it, or you get nothing out of the breaking stuff you want to do. So, that woman is your portion. Live with her. For me, my Lord, love you. So don't think of me. Eh, I'm going to. Uh, no, 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 no. That's the child's play. So, oh, uh, you know, she's not. She, she's not. You know, spirit. I don't know whatever you call it. That is the way God wants it for you. If there's anything you can change, discuss it and move together. But don't forget what I've been called to do is to talk about productivity. So let's quickly look at a few things here. So I'll talk about family health, determinants of health, psychological well-being, a couple of things like that. So at GTMS retreat, attention is focused on the need for us to be fruitful, to multiply, to replenish and dominate. And the four outcome measures that we can find, when I say four outcome measures, you know, we are talking about is the point, okay, good. Fruitfulness. Multiplication. Fruitfulness brings multiplication. Multiplication brings replenishment. And when you replenish, then you over, you, you take over the entire surrounding, you dominate. And that's already explained in Genesis chapter 1. Okay? Productivity, productivity you know, begins from our mind as well as our motivation. Because some people, their situation truly they could perceive is terrible. But they are despondent. In other words, you are throwing your hands into the air as if there's nothing you can do. There's something you can do. Even if yours is garbage, the name that was given to you, you can cry unto the Lord and there can be a reversal. Because the Bible talks about everything he created. He said they were he was talking about everything good, good. But while he talks about you and your wife, he talks about very good. Praise the Lord. So, and the drive to the, the desire to excel, to be productive, must come from you. If you are not primarily motivated, if you are not intrinsically driven, you can't achieve. You might not have been on the streets of Washington or whatever, but did you ever imagine yourself just landing in the U.S. through any of the major airlines? And seeing yourself in the if you cannot if you cannot dream of it if you cannot have a mental picture of it you can never have it. If you cannot see that that project that had delayed for years that in so so time help will arise for you that project will rise will, will stay. But a day comes when you say no. I can see me crossing the river. I can see me overcoming the financial burden. I can see me being a giver to many and not someone who would rather depend on others. Praise the Lord. Be ye transformed. How? By the renewing of your mind. It's until you are transformed in your mind until you erase poverty from your middle name. It's until then you can transcend the level of us who did not pay money or did they, they didn't pay salary. 
For as long as you are still crying, as you didn't pay, oh my shoe. Rather pray. Open my eyes to what I need to do. And God is very, very faithful. I don't know where you work. I don't know your source of income. You may just be even an artisan, but I've seen artisans that are ten times richer than professors. Artisans that are ten times richer than professors. So that your job in your hands is not your limitation. Because it was just one rod that was in the hand of Moses. And yet so much miracle that couldn't be neglected but that to be written in the Bible was written. Close your eyes again. I don't know what's in your hand. I don't know what God has placed in your hands. I don't know what your calling is. Close your eyes, close your eyes, close your eyes. I don't know what's in your hand, but there's something in your hand. There's something in your hand that God wants to use to lift you this, this day. There is something that's placed in your hands. You may be a researcher, others have been writing the same grant, but God gives you the wisdom to write that same grant in a new way. I collaborate with one of my bosses in the US. We have had this grant that has been on for since 2006. Somebody in this hall will know about this grant I'm talking about too. And NIH has been funding that grant for close to 15, 16 years now. And they told my boss, we are not likely going to fund you anymore. Because they have funded the same line of grant, although the money was extremely well utilized. That's why they persevered. And that's why they give all the same money they give to South Africa. We do something like six, seven times of what South Africa is doing with the money. Praise the Lord. But God gave my boss the wisdom. He called us, let's think differently. Why don't we flip it this way? Why don't we change it this way? And we sold the kite to the National Institute of Health. It's one of the grants for 2022 that was awarded. So what's in your hand? You are not totally empty. You are not totally empty. It may be a simple, simple, simple rod that's in your hand. But that simple rod can deliver generations. And that's why you are here today. Let there be a change in your heart, in your mind. Stop adding poverty to be your middle name. No. The earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof. I may not go by this slide because but by biblical basis, we have not even looked at Genesis chapter 1. But whoever will have the time will pick the analysis of Genesis chapter 1, which I've tried to do. But of course, even though there was the promise of God in Genesis chapter 1, but see, that promise, that productivity that God promised couldn't be seen in the days and the hands of Adam and Eve. What? Look at it. For as long as Adam and Eve kept God's directive, there was harmony. In the first family and fellowship with God. Of course, you remember God will come at the cool of the evening to fellowship with them. But once sin came, their peace was disrupted, followed by a curse. So, one of the other things also that may not make you to get to the peak of your game is sin. Sin. Satan's identification number. And for as long as that number and the tag and the label is placed upon you, even if you appear to be prosperous, it's just Erna Abokwa. The relationship between Ken and Hebel also ended tragically. You remember, we don't need to preach that kind of a gospel in this kind of assembly. And again, envy, pride, disobedience was at the root of that one too. 
spiritual ill health affected the family of Adam and Eve and ultimately their children. But let's go to Psalm 112 verses 1 to 4. Psalm 112 verses 1 to 4. Let's be quick. I just pray that our brother will give me a few minutes. Maybe I have to jump some of the slides anyway. Because... Uh, Let's take one to four. Praise the Lord. Blessed is the man who fears the Lord, who delights greatly in his commandments. His descendants will be mighty on the earth. That means the prosperity will no longer be for you and your wife. It will go beyond your generation. You know, some of those things are they are real and they work. Some of the stories I was told concerning my own grandfather at times make me to raise my shoulder beyond my ears. He is called Itiano. In other words, a man who dresses and dressed in, the, in, in layers of Aaron. Aaron is a kind of uh, costly clothes in Yoruba land in those days. But he wouldn't wear one layer. He would wear they are not in layers. So it was called Itiano. The Yahweh Lace also will call me Itiano. And that's again prophetic. Hello, somebody. But even if I have a show, okay, which is common now, very many I have had, I can't remember how many times the ones I've had. <laughs> is it Bible study? I'll be coming and uh, <laughs> coming uh, three layers and uh, <laughs> praise the Lord, somebody. Uh, and brethren say, I get carry if I want to say, Pastor Akimbola, maybe he needs some deliverance. <laughs> Praise the Lord, somebody. But some of those things work. And it makes me to know that even though my beginning may be small, there's one assurance in one corner of my brain. My latter hand shall greatly increase. I don't care where your level is is at the moment your level may not be as bad as mine April 4 2005 I was still in school doing a fresh round of postgraduate in North America and I was in class this phone call came your house in the is burning now Look at Ibadan to Toronto. Can I just jump and come to quench it? But the Lord is faithful. The church tried. Brethren came. The camera crew of those days recorded part of the fire still raging. But since 2004, brethren, I came by while I came. They gave me the CD. Uh, what do you call that thing? Not this cat. We told man to be by. They, they, they gave it to me. And we recorded this for. Do you know since that day, still my inner wardrobe, me or she will lodge your Because I need, I need to move forward. Nothing was spared in the fire outbreak. Wardrobes filled with clothes that we didn't have time to wear while we were going to school reading. New shoes that I've not even worn for Christmas. Certificates. Children's room. Oh, of course, what paid me most was my bookshelf. And in those days, I just newly bought a desktop, Brother Alex. And he loaded it with so much power. So it was some, one of the things I was thinking, me too, I don't have right. The fire consumed everything. So while I came, at times I would want to wear something because a family in this church and the university moved us to campus. Some of you know the story, so I don't need to. And when I wanted to maybe go for, because I needed to spend just about maybe 10 days and go back, and I would want to put my leg in one shoe, the little girl that time, Christy would say, Oh, T. Jonah. 
And I remember another thing. Oh, T. Jonah. At times I run back to the room. Tears. I lock myself up. I clean my eyes. I come again. I see if nothing happened. Oh. All the glory must be to the Lord. To the Lord. For he is worthy of worthy of our praise. No man or night should give glory to himself. All the glory must be, all the glory must be, all the glory must be to the Lord, to the Lord. All the glory must be to the Lord, to the Lord, for He is worthy, worthy of our praise. No man on earth should give glory to Himself. All the glory must be to the Lord. We lift your name. We lift your name. We lift your name. We lift your name. Lord, we lift your name. Baba, we lift your name. Jesus, we lift your name. Lord, we lift your name. We shout a Close your eyes and begin to worship God. Begin to thank Him. Thank Him ahead of the miracle that He will do in your life. Even concerning this meeting. Bless Him ahead of time. Nothing is too difficult for Him to do. Nothing is impossible. Nothing is impossible. Nothing is impossible. For as long as we are holy. For as long as you are righteous, for as long as you call on him, nothing is impossible. I tell you, nothing is impossible. Nothing is impossible. No circumstance can limit you. No situation can stop you. No genetic hindrance can make your head to be bowed. You are princes and kings. Oh, worship him ahead of time. Yeka palamuse teke probuli alalalala. Pray, Lord, take away the mentality of poverty away from me. Pray, I will no longer throw my hands into the air as if there is no help. The Bible says, I will lift up my hands unto the east. From where comes my help? Nothing is impossible with him. 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 Oh, ye son do ya da da da. Lord, we bless you. We adore you. Great is your faithfulness. Great is your faithfulness. Great is your faithfulness. Amen. I just have to keep scrolling because I'm not sure we will have all the time to go through these things that were already written here. But remember. Rehoboam began Abia. A bad father begat a bad son. 
Remember, Abia begat Asa, a bad father and a good son. Asa begat Jehoshaphat, a good father and a good son. Jehoshaphat began Joram, a good father and a bad son. We are talking about productivity. We are talking about your lineage. So, which of this one is your own dimension or perspective? You don't need to tell me what your answer is. You need to ask yourself honestly. You cannot sow the wind and not expect to reap well wind. You cannot sow the seeds when you are raising these children. I expect that you will find anything good. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. We are the parents and we are going to be the first person that God will ask when we get back to the other side. No matter what anybody says about you here, the judgment of God is more important. So you must do it right. If you like, spend 200 years here, good for you. My father, my own biological father spent over 100. But someday he's allowed to close his eyes. In fact, it was the last retreat we were doing sometime. Either this retreat or the one before. It was why we were luring him into the grave that I left the graveyard to come for that retreat. Nobody may know. I left Boyega at that wedding, I mean, burial ceremony. God, I made a sign to him, he made retreat in the meal. Praise the Lord. But they that know their God, they will work strong and they will do exports. Of course, you remember our Lord in those days. His memories may still be fresh in the hearts of some of us. And he produced that one. That's productivity. But this, in terms of earthly biological productivity, see for anything you desire, for as long as you see God first and see what's added to that righteousness, right standing, righteousness, right standing, the kingdom of God, everything that our brother talked about earlier, they are issues relating to the kingdom of God. Gospel truth relating to the kingdom. Every other thing. So, any disease state or circumstances affecting optimum level of functioning invariably influence psychological wellness I, 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 because I wanted to bring in the psychological perspective and to bring in the perspective of wellness and related to productivity. Okay? Um, but we may not have all the time and to define wellness and to define WHO's definition. But very many other circumstances may mediate or moderate the realization of those things you thought you may have in the realm of the physical. Your age, your culture, education, accessibility, illiteracy, availability, gender, religion. These are what we find HLOC is earth locus of control, which could be internal or external. You know, some people can have that kind of the 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 the, the, the the lineage of Abobakus. We would even need even needed to find out what happened to the Abobaku of Alafi. Maybe the other guy, while he knew truly, truly Alafi died, maybe he will escape through the roots or the roof. <laughs> the <guy will> <laughs> Who wants to die for the king? <laughs> so, vulnerability, self efficacy. That's the belief in yourself that no matter the mountain I can climb and I can over resilience, very related. Heart it is your positive or negative disposition. Because with all these things, they, 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 they could be one or two. Remember the story of Sambalat and Tobias. Miracles were going on. The gates were being repaired. Nehemiah chapter 2, Nehemiah chapter 3. Each of the families came out and some people said, open a railway, no? They will soon be tired. But they completed their job. So why your enemies are saying that you won't rise for as long as you are steadfast and you are in right standing with God, you will finish that project in Jesus' name. Because we release the grace upon you today. If the Lord has been gracious to me and I'm still praying that he will give me more grace. For as many as are trusting God and say, how will it be? There shall be a sign that will come upon you today. That will begin to channel your steps aright and will direct you to where your miracles are lying. Airports of destiny will locate you. 
Oh, hindrances along your path will be quashed. The Lord will cause your feet to move fast. Grace shall be your peace. And you'll be an overcomer. In the name of Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord. So there are some of the things, but this is in the psychological literature, in publications and all of that. But the letter killed. But the spirit. So in as much as we have been in the literature, our own lot is not the, de- the lot of what is published. Of course, there are very many other things. Some people paranoia. Somebody is the one that is doing me. Eh? For how long do you dwell on that mountain? No. Depression or apathy, anxiety, fear of the unknown, fear of failure. You have not started. You will say, if I build a house there, it will collapse. Why don't you start first? You are saying it will collapse. You have not bought the land. Just buy the land first. So you cannot be thinking of raising that you know, bungalow or one-story building when you have not bought that land. And you may need to launch into the deep. You might have labored for so long and you might have caught nothing. But I started by saying a day shall come when the yoke shall be broken. And the body shall be lifted. Those fishes, fishes were in that river. The same time he was going back and forth and trying to have his fish overnight, he caught nothing. But say, say, at thy word. And the word of God is coming to you tonight. And the Lord is telling you, brother, that you are fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are thy works, O Lord. Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 11. Concludes my story. For I know the thoughts I think towards you. Thoughts of good, not of evil. To give me a future. To give me a hope. To give me an expected end. And I said I will not die until my feet has touched all the continents of the world. I've touched 15 countries so far. I will still go yet more. Praise the Lord. I don't know what your desire is. It's not because, because even when you are still there, you are still like a slave in another white man's land. So it doesn't shock me. It does not shock me. It doesn't shock me. It doesn't shock me. But anywhere you are, let it be known that there is light in the midst of darkness. Light in the midst of darkness. Others might have been cutting corners, but some people can still do it and do it right and still get a better result. Look at the story of Daniel. Praise the Lord. So when trouble comes, the sequence of events, this is talking about physiology. I don't want to take us to physiology this evening. Uh, because, uh, so in failure, even if you have failed several times, there is success. This is a summary of what I've come here to say tonight. You might have failed several times. But even in the midst of that failure, there is success. We married in 1991. At the end of every month, when that menstrual flow comes, no flow comes again. Hey, And it was like that for so long. But the day came. It was near what? I told you for saying near what? The word of God released again. In a miracle service of express free shoe at Bobo shopping complex. An invited minister was called in. And was somewhere else doing work of evangelism while miracle service was going on. This was 19, this was 1992 now. And the work came. Drop whatever you are doing now. Take your wife. Go and join the miracle service. And for some of you who know GT in those days, if you come late, it's television you watch on the first floor. It's television you will watch. But thank God for Sister Sophia Lao. Ibola Timber, brother, by yo. And the man of God wanted to close the meeting. And he said, Let me again pray for another group. Again, you want to close the meeting. It's another group. Kere Kere, we were moving across that staircase. We were already by the door to enter the main auditorium for some of you, you know, the shopping cup. And he couldn't close that meeting until he mentioned our peculiar problem as God spoke to us while we were at that, you know, evangelical meeting we were. That was the month the yoke of barrenness got broken. Let's close our eyes. I'm not sure I'll be able to go through the slides because we still have so many. In failure, there is success. Have you failed before? 
Have you failed before? And your story should be rewritten today. Your story, your story should be rewritten today. Why don't you speak to God? Take that matter, matter to God. Speak with Him. Speak with Him. Speak with Him. You might have failed several times. But air paralysis for you today. Air paralysis for you today. I cannot be a God's son and I'll be a failure. No, there's no correlation. They don't go together. They don't go together. Motivation. That's the issue. Have positive motivation in your hand that I can do it. It is possible. So let it be in Jesus' name. I've needed to road over very many slides so that I can take this so that we can close because I'm a man under authority. And I want to be obedient. Eight rules for increasing productivity. The hardest part is to get started. Tell somebody get started. That's why we talk about there's a need for a renewing of your mind. That's where it begins from. It's from your mind. You are on that seat, you are on that, at that post, at that level, because you've confined yourself to that level. A day will come and say, no, I will not take this anymore. And the heavens will hear you. And the heavens will hear you tonight. And they will, you'll be relocated. So start with simple goals. And now is the time from tonight. Plan each step. We are talking about productivity. Pay attention to what you do in the morning. For you to be productive, your activities in the morning is very, very critical. That's documented in psychology literature and very many other literature. I may not be able to go through the details now. Apart from that, adopt the right habits. That's very, very important. Self-discipline. You cannot be working, calculating fixes, questions, mathematics, and you'll be listening, listening to you know, uh, uh, what is the, okay, which one is the news media they do in the morning? You cannot be listening to Ogbono Feli Feli and you'll be calculating and uh, be doing physics calculation. No, okay. No, they don't go together. They don't go together. Some of us will go from Ogbenoton to which other one and they keep moving from station to station. You think there are no people like that? We could also have people even in this assembly. But come off it. I learned from the mouth of one of my teachers in those days. If you watch the television too much, you cannot appear on the television. You are saying, huh? Egbami. Egbami. He says, if you have a terrible habit of sitting before the TV to watch the TV 24-7, you yourself will not appear on that television. So some of you will come from season one to season two. Season what? Do you know our children tell us this in the youth church? And they didn't run those films, those video clips themselves. You bring it home. African magic. I was telling Brass Inventor, they installed the TV, I mean Brass Ivanos. They installed the TV Adana in November or December because we changed a few things. Ever since they finished that meeting, maybe who came home in uh, Easter and just switched on Easter from Easter, from December to Easter. You can imagine how many months my TV in the city room was not switched on once. But I've appeared on the TV myself and they'll tell me they saw me in BCS or send me. At times I, I did something for the, the House of Parliament and somebody said the beam did it on. But I didn't even watch it myself. But if you have the habit of being on the TV, I mean, watching the TV, you yourself will not appear on that TV. It's not a curse. I'm not saying don't watch CNN. 
because you can also obtain information. Don't misunderstand me. But when your habit is to switch from one channel to the other, to the other, to the other, we need to stop it. Adopt the right habit. Self-discipline, less time on WhatsApp. Some people belong to almost 50 WhatsApp groups. And you contribute to every gist on each of those platforms. That's more than enough employment. <laughs> it's more than enough. It's more, more than enough. <laughs> but nobody pays you for belonging or for contributing on each of those WhatsApp platforms. Eh? Make it fun when you are doing something that is even if it's you are cleaning the house or are doing something, you can be this something that will keep you rolling on. Balance, work, and rest. I have learned of so many principles. And very many people have published 50 minutes of work, 10 minutes of rest for every hour of your day. Did you get that? Especially for the hours of work. Minimum of eight hours. Hmm? But if you have an academic, if you are an academic person, eight hours will not be enough anyway. 2 a.m., 3 a.m., you are still replying international mails. While you are sleeping, they are just waking. And they're expecting that you should reply whatever they have told you. That's the way it goes. Praise the Lord, somebody. So, but, again, there's something called the 80-20 rule. 20% of your work time is more productive. Identify that 20% period when you click better. Don't be distracted over that period. So if possible, you may switch off your phone occasionally so they can concentrate and do good business. Okay? And you should be able to sit down to see what makes your work to progress each day. We're talking about productivity. Be organized. Look at your shadows. When is the time you need greatest concentration? At that point in time, there must be perfect concentration and determination. Make time for your soul. Is your Bible study, your church programs, visitation, and what makes you happy, do it. If I have music of Equa of those days, oh, I enjoy it a lot. I enjoy it a lot. And the, the likes of Oke okay, Mimo, Oke okay, Agbara, not because I go, I've never entered Oke okay, Agbara since I came to Ibadan, so it's not the Oke okay, Agbara of Ashi I'm talking about. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Shall we close this meeting? We are at the peak of it. We are at the peak of it. Bible talks about bring forth your strong arguments. What's your strong argument, brother? What's your strong argument? That I might be healed. That I may receive my sight. Be specific. First Chronicles chapter 4. You are familiar with this scripture. Verse 9. Now Jabez was more honorable than his brothers. And his mother called his name Jabez. Saying, because I bore him in pain. Verse 10. And Jabez called on the God of Israel. And that's exactly what we are saying. I have just less than one and a half minutes to leave this place. You need to call on the God of Israel. Is in a mist. Oh, that will bless me indeed and enlarge my territory. This was one of the scriptures. I think I can't remember who was our leader at that time. <laughs> this scripture helped me so much. Oh. This scripture, this scripture, this scripture helped me so much. This scripture helped me so much. This scripture helped me. Enlarge my territory. Bible talks about you enlarging to the right and to the left. That land across your street, it shouldn't be an imam again that will buy it. No. 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 Enlarge my territory. Oh, 
shall we call it Endow Shafi to help us to close this meeting? Be precise that I might receive my sight. Be specific. Are we sleeping? If you are sleeping, praise the Lord. 